these small pots you see belong to another species of wild bee. This wild bee makes a sticky mud by mixing its saliva with moist soil. It makes exceedingly regular pots by using the mud it makes. It gives form to the mud by continually turning it around, the same technique used by human beings to make pots. When the pot is finished, it doesn't neglect to add a lid. When everything is ready, the bee turns its rear towards the mouth of the pot and leaves an egg inside. After adding some food materials to the pot, it seals the mouth up and flies off. The larva which hatches from the egg will later break the pot and emerge and start a life of its own. These are pots broken by the young and then abandoned. The young which emerge start to build perfect pots, just like their mothers did and with no training. This wonderful craft they possess was inspired in them by God, their creator. Spiders, on the other hand, make their webs with threads from their own bodies. Spider thread is five times stronger than steel of the same thickness. Even large flies which move fast through the air cannot escape the strong and flexible trap of the spider web. There are sticky droplets on black widow spider webs. It is impossible for prey caught in these webs to free themselves. The spider's web is sticky, flexible, and amazingly strong. Beyond being a trap, this web is actually an extension of the spider's own body. The spider feels the vibration of every prey that gets caught in the web and catches it without delay. The web is produced in the spider's hind quarters. It pulls the thread produced by a special organ with its legs. The sticky droplets on the surface of the thread are actually small bunches of thread. These open out when necessary and the web easily stretches. There is no doubt that it's the inspiration God gives this creature that causes the spider to build this architectural marvel. The 19th century may go down in human history as the century of deceptions, because in that period, many philosophies with no scientific basis, such as Marxism, were imposed on mankind. But the greatest deception of the 19th century was the theory of evolution put forward by the British biologist called Charles Darwin. In his book, The Origin of Species, published in 1859, Darwin suggested that all living things in nature had come about as the result of blind chance. This theory appeared quite believable given the primitive level of 19th century science, and it was soon widely accepted.
However, modern scientific discoveries have demolished Darwin's claims. Paleontology, the science of fossils, shows that different living groups appeared on the Earth suddenly and underwent no evolution over hundreds of millions of years. Anatomy and biochemistry have proven that there are very complex structures in living things and that these cannot come about by chance. And biological observations have revealed that nature does not possess the alleged mechanisms to transform species into one another. For these reasons, Darwinism today is a theory that has scientifically collapsed. Animals' intelligent behavior that we have observed in this film is another important fact that overturns the theory of evolution. Evolutionists call the intelligent behavior that animals exhibit without undergoing any special training instinct. But they cannot explain the origin of instinct. In his book, The Origin of Species, Darwin devoted a whole section to the subject. At the very start of this section, entitled Instinct, he admits how deadly the intelligent behavior in animals is to his theory. So wonderful an instinct as that of the hive bee making its cells will probably have occurred to many readers as a difficulty sufficient to overthrow my whole theory. Darwin was especially baffled by the architectural skills of the honeybee and ask himself, what shall we say to so marvelous an instinct as to that which leads the bee to make cells, which have practically anticipated the discoveries of profound mathematicians? The answer Darwin gave to this question was habit. He suggested that a living creature developed a habit over the course of its life, then passed this habit on to its offspring Thus, an inherited instinct developed over time. Darwin was basing this argument on the theories of the French biologist Lamarck, who lived before him. But the science of genetics, which developed in the 20th century, showed that Lamarck's theories were pure nonsense and that no living thing can pass on a feature or a habit it has acquired during its lifetime to the next generation. This proved that Darwin's explanation of instinct was based on mistaken guesswork. Another dilemma instinct poses to the theory of evolution is the problem that animals possess instinct from the moment they are born. An animal which lacked the necessary instinct would be unable to survive. An offspring which did not possess the instinct of sucking its mother's milk would be unable to live. This demonstrates that instinct cannot have come about by stages over time, as evolutionists claim. For all these reasons, instinct is a fact capable of demolishing the theory of evolution all by itself, as Darwin had feared. In his book, The Great Evolution Mystery, the evolutionist writer Gordon Taylor makes this confession. When we ask ourselves how an instinctive pattern of behavior arose in the first place and became hereditarily fixed, we are given no answer. 